Connecticut's number one local news. This is Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us on this Tuesday morning. October 19th. I almost said August. Doesn't feel like it. I'm Nicole Nalepa. Well, it's official. As of 6 a.m. this morning, gamblers in Connecticut are now able to make online sports wagers. The process finally got full approval after a soft launch last week. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Roger Suzanne has the details on what you need to know before placing a bet. The wait is over. Gamblers can finally bet on sports basically anytime, anywhere, as online sports wagers finally gets the green light here in Connecticut. The process hit a few last minute snags which delayed this moment, but last week the Department of Consumer Protection okayed a soft launch which officials say went smoothly and paved the way for full approval. There are of course a few rules and regulations. You have to be 21 and there are some restrictions about gambling on local college sports. But other than that, as long as you are in Connecticut, you are free to bet on sports online. Two major websites, FanDuel and DraftKings, have already been approved to offer more than 130 games, according to the Department of Consumer Protection. And with all four major professional sports in full swing, gaming industry executives feel that, from their perspective at least, the timing is perfect. It's kind of like this sports equinox where almost every sport is available. That was Roger Susanna reporting. Now we have a full list of all the sites where you can place an online bet here in Connecticut right now on the Channel 3 app. Also, we're keeping a close eye on the coronavirus. The FDA is reportedly set to allow a mix and match approach for COVID booster shots. According to the New York Times, the agency could announce its decision Wednesday, so tomorrow, when it's expected to authorize the Moderna and Johnson & Johnson boosters. And according to the latest information from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, more than 1,000 Americans are dying each day from COVID-19, though most are unvaccinated. Also, according to a new report from the CDC, our state leads the nation when it comes to vaccinating kids. Governor Ned Lamont says more than 80 percent of kids got the recommended childhood vaccines in Connecticut. That's above the national average of 70, 70 and a half percent. The data is based on 2017 to 2018 vaccine rates. And over the weekend, Hartford City officials appealed to local people to help get guns off the streets. And this morning, we are learning more about how successful that special event was. Mayor Luke Bronin shared this photo on Twitter, saying at least 150 guns were collected at the buyback program, which was hosted by Hartford Police and several organizations against gun violence. Mayor Bronin also said that one woman brought in nine semi-automatic weapons that she had inherited from a family member. He says that these weapons were taken to prevent them from being stolen or left unsecured. Now over in Middletown this morning, we're learning an interim superintendent is preparing to take the helm of the public school district. The current superintendent, Dr. Michael Connor, asked for a voluntary leave during a board of education meeting last night, citing advice from his doctor. And this all comes after a formal complaint by the teachers union, alleging that teachers were being harassed and intimidated by administrators. A longtime teacher and coach from Vernon is facing child pornography and voyeurism charges this morning. Police say Christian Stevenson, who recently resigned from Rockville High School, had images that appear to have been taken inside the school. And they say the underage students did not seem to know that they were being photographed or recorded. For the first time in five years, UConn men's basketball team is ranked in the AP preseason top 25. UConn is at number 24 in the poll, one of the two Big East teams in the rankings. UConn opens the season on November 9th against Central Connecticut at Gamble Pavilion. And if you need help paying your bills, keep an eye on your phone today because the governor and housing commissioners say electrical utility customers here in Connecticut will soon get a robocall to bring attention to funds that can help residents pay overdue bills. The Unite CT program has delivered $17 million in payments for eligible Eversource and United Illuminating customers. The robocall is scheduled for today, so you will be able to confirm your eligibility when you answer the call, which will contain a short message from Governor Lamont. Melissa, how's the weather looking out there this morning? Still chilly out there, Nicole, but we're going to be warming up this afternoon into the 60s, and we have a beautiful stretch of weather heading our way. Let's take a look at our headlines. Chilly morning, some of our overnight lows have dipped down to the low 30s to mid 30s, but this afternoon we'll feel seasonable with highs in the 60s, and then believe it or not, we're talking about 70s again Wednesday and Thursday, so a big warm-up on the way. 
37 currently in Woodbridge, Litchfield 37, Meriden 37, Waterbury at 40 degrees after bottoming out around 37 degrees. So still real chilly stuff out there. We haven't had temperatures this cold since last May, I believe. So um, feeling like almost winter like outside, but wait till this afternoon. Temperatures will be rebounding into the 60s, lower to perhaps mid 60s. And then for tonight, not as cold. We'll have some uh, bit of a wind shift that's going to help to keep our temperatures up a little bit overnight. So we'll uh, drop down into the upper 40s and lower 50s. And then for tomorrow afternoon, lower to middle 60s. And we're going to do that again on Thursday. Here's what it looks like outside right now in New Haven. Fantastic 47 degrees. Winds currently calm there. The winds have been a little bit gustier in the New London area. Out of the west at 9, 44 degrees. Clear skies overhead and in Middletown right now. Not a cloud to be found as we take a look at the Connecticut River. 35 in Colebrook. That's the coldest spot I saw this morning. Milford, 41. Basra, 39 degrees. But with all that sunshine, will warm up fairly quickly outside. So just within the next hour or two, you'll start to notice a difference in the feel in the air. And we stay mostly sunny through the day today. Clear overnight tonight. Mostly sunny for your Wednesday. And we will see again temperatures rising up about 10 more degrees tomorrow afternoon compared to this afternoon and even a few more degrees than that come uh, Thursday afternoon. So today we're looking at temps around 60 in Torrington, 63 in Hartford and New Haven, 63 in Norwich, 62 today in Vernon, about 61 in Putnam. Clear skies, not as chilly overnight tonight, down to about 48 in Hartford, 51 New Haven, 49 Chester, 47 in Vernon. And your seven-day forecast looks fantastic. We're talking about sunshine on Wednesday, 72, 74 on Thursday, breezy, clouds increasing a bit, and a cold front slides through either late Thursday or very early Friday. It looks like it's going to come through dry. Main thing it will do is just knock our temperatures down a bit for the end of the week. Then for the upcoming weekend, a little bit unsettled on Saturday with the chance for a few scattered showers. Sunday looks good, though. Cooler, though. And Monday, only 55. All right. Thanks, Melissa. Those are the stories, your top stories on this Tuesday morning. We hope you have a great day. Be healthy, stay positive, and stay warm. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Thanks for watching Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Watch us live wherever you are, on our mobile, on our streaming news app. And you can also watch us on Roku, Apple TV, and Fire TV.